are you trying to pull off on this thing? I know it's tough because it's snowing, but what are you trying to pull off? Um, I was going to do a 540, but then I just couldn't spin it because the snow was all like really bad. The snow might have been bad, but Danny Cass was not. Hurry up, Dan. The battery's almost dead. Are you watching shit again? No, I'm filming Danny. Holy shit, was that an inverted cab 1080 with a melon grab? That bitch is crazy. So I met Danny, man, I was probably 11 when he moved to Vernon, New Jersey, where I, where I was born and raised. And a funny story, I actually met his older brother first. Matt's like, yeah, my brother will probably beat you up. And I was like, what? Like, that's not how you introduce somebody. The first time I ever met Danny uh, was at a contest at Sierra Tahoe, and I remember we stole a keg of beer. Yeah, I met Danny and Lane Kanak in Junior Worlds in, in Italy in 2000. That was Giacomo Carrado's hometown. Yeah, I met Danny. We were 11 or 12. We went to the regionals. Matt kept telling me about his little brother and how he's like this badass little snowboarder and he's gonna kick my ass and all this shit. Yeah, it's quite an experience. <laughs> My first time ever meeting Danny. You no, know, I can't recall exactly what he said, but he's just such a dick. He's just like, <laughs> he just like made fun of me about something. I don't know, either like my gear or fuck it, I don't know. He just like ragged on me and then just bailed off. I would watch Danny and it didn't look like he was trying. It looked like he was just like, almost like didn't want to be there. But like, he would end up on the podium like every single time. I saw the newspapers, like, first page, cover page, it said, like, Olympian, U.S. Olympian. <laughs> like, get by, cut by the weed on the cover of the newspaper. And I just remember being, like, so pissed, like, fuck. Like, well, I'm, like, trying to do it, like, the right way, and he's just, like, blown in, Danny style, like, oh, I forgot my, I think I forgot my boots. Can I borrow your boots? Oh, I got first. Weird. I gotta say, the hard part about talking about Danny Cass is there's too much to say. Danny's one of those guys that I didn't understand how good he was until he was really, really good. That was just sick. He definitely put the, the skateboarding back in the sport of snowboarding pretty much when it needed it the most. You can't put him in a box because you look at him and you're like, this is a professional athlete? And yeah, like this is the professional athlete. Lean over and grab that bar. Penny Daddy and show me. Get your feet in the air. What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Danny Cass. I grew up near Vernon Valley, New Jersey, which was uh, is now Mountain Creek. Before that, I kind of grew up skateboarding in Ponte Vedra, Florida. And that's where it all began, on the skateboard. Danny's background, you know, is skateboarding, right? He grew up in Jacksonville and was, you know, at a young age skating Kona uh, and like dropping into the 13 foot bowl there and all that kind of crazy stuff for a kid. So instantly when you see him, got, kind of when you saw him got on a snowboard, he like already had that kind of like natural feel and vibe of it where he was like accelerating pretty quickly. So he instantly, you know, the second he started riding a little bit better stuff in, in the Poconos or up in Vermont, you could see him accelerating and, and picking it up pretty quickly. Started competing at a young age, just amateur stuff at like 12 years old and then kind of did that until about 13 or 14. We started doing trips up to Vermont and that's where the mountains got bigger and the riders got better and that's when uh, the scene kind of exploded, 93, 94. The future of the sport though is the younger generation and they without a doubt love to compete and have fun. Kind of 13, 14 is like the first time that me and my friends ever went to go check out the Burton US Open at Stratton. And I think that's when, in my mind, it really like the transformation from skateboarding into like what is, you know, vert and, uh, you know, half pipe riding really came together for me. And that's when I just fell in love with snowboarding. I literally went from riding like a regular stance like this to then like going like I want to go backwards and switch so I went duck and that's how I learned how to go backwards in the half pipe I was like whoa if I really keep up with this I might be able to land on some more podiums at this time like when I was you know in my teens almost 20s like our group basically was like a you know the top riders from the East Coast 
Um, and the people I really looked up to was uh, Kyle Clancy and Lane Kanak and this guy called Zach Leach who went on to invent multiple rail slides all under the Zeech slide. And then we kind of like all set our sights on Mammoth. You know, Mammoth just had this insane park in the early 2000s and that's where we all converged. We had this idea on a chairlift, me and my brother, and it was, you know, he really wanted to like do something in snowboarding and create some sort of cool product. And at the time I was like, well, I have two different gloves on. You know, maybe we could make some gloves. Literally, as we were like riding up the chairlift, we kind of, you know, thought of this name, Grenade Gloves, and literally went down to Brian Walton, who was a graphic designer in Mammoth, and created the, the bomb logo and everything else within like a few hours of that conversation. And it really just kind of exploded from there. It was, it was, it was, it was mayhem. It was fucking mayhem. And I don't think anybody knew, had any idea what they were doing. It was just, everybody had this passion and love for snowboarding. And, you know, it, it, it all, it all kind of happened pretty quick. But we were just a fucking rowdy bunch. And I was just, I was just the guy that was sleeping on the couch. That's, that's where I came into the story.